Okay. A bit of hydrogen peroxide there, so we'll keep that out of the way of children. So today's video is going to be about how to germinate grain for growing hydroponic sprouted barley. As you can see, we are sat in our growing chamber, actually an incubation room, it's nothing more. Uh, what we've done is we've built out a sandwich panel. Now, what I want to talk to you about today is seed germination, and most importantly, the power of seed. A lot of people think growing hydroponic barley is easy, and it's not. Now, the key to growing good hydroponic barley is nothing other than seed selection. Everyone will tell you it's water, it's temperature, it's humidity. It's actually good seed selection. Now, most if not all seeds can be sprouted. To sprout seeds, we must first germinate them. There are many different ways, theories and tricks to germinating seeds for growing or sprouting. But the truth is only three things are required, which is a good potent seed that are active, water and oxygen. Now, some people say seeds need light to germinate, but the truth is seeds are planted in the ground, uh, dry, buried under the soil in complete darkness and germinate perfectly fine. Seeds are really fascinating miracles. Uh, all trees, plants, uh, flowers, herbs, vegetables start out as seeds and nature gave us an ecosystem for seeds to multiply uh, by the millions without the intervention of people. So. Uh, take the acorn for example, all oak trees uh, come from acorns. Oak trees can uh, grow over time to be 90 feet tall from a tiny little acorn to a, a 90 foot tree, which can also be sprouted and packs an absolute nutritional punch. Oak trees can also produce 10,000 acorns per year. Uh, white oak trees have a, a lifespan of over 300 years. That means a single oak tree can give over 3 million acorns. Uh, sunflowers have thousands of seeds per flower. The power of seeds and the reproduction capacity of them is nothing short of a mirror. What we're doing at Verticroft is harvesting the power of a seed to create a fresh, sustainable source of animal feed in the Middle East. High in digestible protein, good fibers, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and high in digestibility. Today, we're focusing on the very first part of our growing process, and you can check out our other videos on the power of Vita Sprouts and the science behind it on our channel. But before we get into how to germinate your seeds for fodder production, let's look at the science behind the germination and sprouting process. So plants contain six major parts, the stem, the leaf, the flower, the root, the fruit, and the seed. What's inside a seed is where the miracle happens. Technically a seed is the reproductive organ of the angiosperm. It's a structure that is formed by the maturation of the ovule within the ovary of the angiosperm, i.e. it's the mature ovule within the ovary of the angiosperm, i.e. the mature ovule. So a seed is compromised of several parts. The coat, the outer part of the seed, is called the testa. The inner part of the seed is called the tengum. The embryo, which is hosting the roots, the stem, and the leaves. So after a plant is fertilized, the male and female gametes form a zygote. Now, I don't want to bang on too much about science, but the zygote eventually form the plant embryo, which is protected by the plant coat, also developing into what is known as an endosperm, which is food the plant will use during the early stages of germination. Now, during the early stages of growth, seeds rely on a chemical fuel called ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. Now, ATP acts as a carrier of energy in all living organisms from uh, camels to onions. Uh, ATP uses that energy to release from the explosion of nutrients within the seed and makes it available to the reactions that need that energy, uh, such as growing a seed into a, a sprout. Now, ATP carries the seed through the early stages of life, so 24 to 48 hours, before the seed grows leaves and photosynthesis begins now, try saying that with veneer. Uh, so seeds rely on the endosperm for food and ATP for energy until leaf matter is produced and starts creating chlorophyll. Chlorophyll molecules convert the energy of light into carbon dioxide, uh, carbohydrates, and oxygen. We all learn this process in school, it's called uh, photosynthesis. Now, the germination and sprouting process it's a sub-microscopic miracle which is happening inside of all seeds uh, at all times. Now, what I want to show you today is how we select uh, and test our seed capacity 
and germination capacity. Now, as I said at the start of this video, there's lots of tricks, tips, rumors uh, that say you do need light, don't need light. Uh, what you really need is a good quality seed. So when you're growing hydroponic fodder, what we're looking for is any seed of barley with a germination capacity of 90% or more. Now, what that does is allows you to create a really thick root mat and actually grow really thick, fine grass. Now, if you use a seed at less than 90%, you're gonna get a really thin root mat and your plant base isn't gonna form that well. So we've got a 90% barley seed germination rate. We have got a liter of uh, agua, which in uh, English is known as uh, water, a 60 mil syringe, and hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide has got the chemical formula of H202, and it's basically gonna be mixed in the liter of water at one milliliter per liter. Now, we do this in large scale, small scale, we run our tests, but when we're germinating large batches of grain, so for this system that I'm sat in, we need to germinate uh, 200 kilos of grain per day, and we use the same formula and same mix ratio of hydrogen peroxide, 6%, uh, you can buy it at any chemist, supermarket, pharmacy, and we mix it into the water, which I'm gonna show you how we do that in a minute. Now, though, it's extremely important that we're constantly testing the germination capacity of our seed. Now, before we import all of our seeds, we obviously send them to laboratories and get them analyzed. Now, storing seed in itself is a skill, and that's what we excel at. What I'm gonna do today is our standard test, which we run on every batch of new grain that we bring from overseas into the country, to ensure that before we put a big grow on and start producing hydroponic grass for our animals and livestock, that we actually are gonna get a good result. Now, what I recommend is you wear some rubber gloves because if you expose hydrogen peroxide to your skin, it's gonna burn and make a little white. So if you're gonna do this at home, children and kids out there, please use gloves and uh, ask your mum to put some goggles on. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply take the hydrogen peroxide and we're gonna pour it. I'm gonna take the syringe and I'm gonna take exactly one ml of hydrogen peroxide. Be very careful when you do this part. What I'm actually doing here, guys, is I'm using the syringe that we usually use, like an idiot, for the larger grows where we're soaking 200 kilos of grain. Now, in my infinite wisdom in filming this video, I've decided, like a complete plant pot, to use the same syringe to try and extract, a, in fact, a millimeter liter of hydrogen peroxide. And in the process, I've just figured out that that's not possible. So what we don't need is this. What we'll use instead is this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this syringe, it's a three ml syringe, I'm gonna extract a milliliter. Gonna go into the water. Now always mix the hydrogen peroxide in the water before putting the grain in. Uh, the reason for that is because it mixes evenly and we found in our trials and studies over the last you know, three, four years that when we put the hydrogen peroxide into the water that's actually already got the grain in it, concentrates in a certain area. So we're gonna take a piece of tissue paper and 100 seeds. We're gonna sprinkle the seeds on the tissue paper like so. From this water, enough of this mixed solution to dampen but not wet the tissue paper. Once I've done this, then it's damp but not wet. Then we're gonna take it and we're gonna fold it into one, take some more solution, uh, dampen but not wet the tissue paper, fold it again, dampen but not wet, make sure you put the lid back on the needle or you're going to stab yourself. So then we're going to place it into a sealable bag. Now, we're gonna leave this, it can be left in a cupboard or anywhere you like, for 48 hours. Where we're gonna come back, and from the 100 seeds, what we wanna see is that at least 90 of the seeds have grown a little tiny chits. And we know that their seeds are good, that they germinate well, and they're gonna be successful in our system. Uh, we're producing 15 to 20 tons of fodder per day, and I can't be putting, the th we're using the three, uh, four tons of grain per day. Uh, we can't be using bad grain or 
brain that doesn't germinate in our system because we've got livestock to keep alive. So this is just a little test that we use to make sure that our seeds are germinating as they should be. Uh, for you at home, you can do this with any seed, uh, acorns, you can do it with onion seeds, chia seeds, soybeans, uh, you can do it with anything. Um, and this is how uh, most gardeners, garden tenters, uh, amateur growers are in fact testing the, the um, we're going to take seeds on a much larger scale than this bag and we're actually going to plant them in this wonderful room which we'll show you in a different video uh, but you might be taking the seeds out of here and actually using them to grow cucumbers, tomatoes, capsicum, sunflowers um, and this is how you at home for home gardening would actually start your so seeds. So to recap you're going to need a hundred seeds or 10 seeds or you know an equal amount of seeds you're going to need a liter of water some six percent hydrogen peroxide a needle a piece of tissue paper and a sealable bag at which point you're going to come back and hopefully your seeds have got little chips and that's how you uh, germinate grain and test the germination capacity of your grain or seeds for sprouting or growing hope you enjoyed see you next time